This podcast is brought to you by Fairly. Hi everyone, welcome back to Verity. In this podcast, we discuss the present topic as it relates to the SDG. I'm Hanshima and I will be your host today. Therefore, I shall discuss about gender inequality in the workplace here. We will talk about current social issues in today's episode and work to promote equality and awareness. Discrimination against people with gender in the workplace takes many forms including unequal pay, disparity in promotions, incidents of sexual harassment and racism. Often, it presents itself in more nuanced ways, like fewer opportunities for women who are mothers and a higher incidence of burnout in women will be topics of discussion today. If you feel discriminated against, especially at work, please listen to this episode. Let's get started without further ado. So, is gender inequality still an issue in the workplace? While some regions and countries have done a great deal to pursue workplace equality, we still see persistent gender gaps across industry. Gender inequality happens when there are biases and preferential treatments based on people's sex and gender. Employees who do not receive the same opportunities, rewards, and resources for being a man or woman experience gender inequality in the workplace. Employers have crucial responsibilities in fostering a fair workplace culture, but are companies consistent in supporting and advocating it? Why does gender inequality occur in the workplace? Well, it occurs in the workplace due to traditional gender roles and persistent gender bias. Traditional gender roles may be indicative of how much extra time and effort an individual can put into their jobs, since employees are usually expected to go above and beyond to prove their worth and this can lead to inequality. There are gender biases that may inadvertently give the advantage to one gender over the other in the workplace, such as the idea that men have more physical capability or that women are better in nurturing roles. On top of this, several employees have had closer encounters with the phenomenon. You also might have experienced gender inequality in your workplace. Now, let's move on to the first point of the gender inequality in workplace, which is unequal pay. First, unequal pay is a situation where women are paid less than men for doing the same work. The gender wage gap is real and it hurts women across the board by suppressing their earnings and making it hard for them to balance work and family. Are women are equally paid for their work? Even women have to take time off from work or leave work to shoulder the demands of raising children or other family obligations. However, because of this issue, more than half of women leave the workforce within a year, which is twice the rate of men. Equal pay for women and wo- men and women is still not a reality. This gender pay gap has persisted over the past years. There are multiple reasons to blame, including sticky flaws that result from traditional social norms that keep women from choosing higher paying roles in male dominated industries and equal access to education and discrimination. In addition, Women, especially those living intersectional realities like their gender and immigrant women, grapple with a fear of negotiating pay and being penalized if they do. One recent study questioned this idea and found that women ask for pay raises just as often as men, but they get only 50% of the time as compared to 20% when men ask. However, while the wages sub-index show the lowest gender gap, the country has not yet achieved gender equality. There is still an average of 40% wage gap between men and women in similar work worldwide. The 2020, the 2020 salaries and wages statistic from the Department of Statistics Malaysia reported that male and female salaries decreased, but the monthly salaries of male employees are still higher than women. In addition to the pay gap, there is also a gender leadership gap. Many women are often passed up for promotion opportunities in the workplace due in part to gender discrimination. First, unconscious bias is still alive and thriving in workplace cultures. Some leaders still carry the assumption that males have more potential than a well-qualified woman. Even gender achievements are perceived differently. For example, a male employee may get an email praising his service and the boss announces it to all the other employees giving him kudos and praise at the group meeting. Meanwhile, a female employee receives a similar or even better email and nothing is said or is it acknowledged. 
unconsciously, the boss may perceive the work of the male employee as more productive and deserving of praise than the female. Every employee should have the opportunity to climb up in their career. Thus, no one should face promotion discrimination because of cultural differences or physical or mental conditions. There is progress in women's representation, especially in senior roles. However, men still outnumber women in being promoted to the managerial level. Moving on to the next point, which is bias against mothers. Mothers looking for employment are less likely to be hired, are offered lower salaries, and are perceived as being less committed to a job than fathers or women without children. Giving birth to a life is the greatest gift given by nature to a woman, but sometimes it impacts the professional life of women. A working mother is expected to work like she doesn't have a kid and raise a kid as if she doesn't have work. Therefore, this is the root cause of gender inequality in the workplace. Motherhood makes women choose between work and family, and eventually, a woman leaves work and chooses family. Working mothers are perceived to be less committed to work and less likely to be recommended for a promotion or a new role, which inevitably has a negative impact on one's career trajectory. All this prejudice exists despite the fact that mothers are known to be great problem solvers and brilliant multitaskers. The conclusion is that it is believed that a woman's dedication to a family and childcare make their less committed and unable to put in long working hours compared to their male colleagues, especially at high-level jobs. In addition, racism and sexism are the causes of the inequality and discrimination that racially minoritized women face in their everyday lives. It's not different in the workplace. Unfortunately, race seems to play a major role in how women are treated and compensated in the workplace. The pay a woman receives may vary depending on her race and ethnicity. Compared to what women, women of color, and women with marginalized identities face a higher rate of disrespectful and other microaggressions like being questioned or interrupted. Women of color also do not have active allies at work. But employees think of themselves as a light woman of colors, but less than half achieve even basic actions like calling out bias or rallying for new opportunities for women of color. Often, this is because what allies and women of color have very different ideas of what's helpful. Now, we have reached to the last points. Generally, women are three times more likely than men to experience sexual harassment in the workplace. However, in the most male-dominated workplaces, women are nearly six times more likely than men to be harassed and the risk for men is almost twice as high as women in the most female-dominated workplaces. Naturally, both male and female workers had a high aversion against taking jobs in workplace where a sexual harassment incident had occurred and if the harassment victim has been of the same gender as them, then this aversion was three times larger. The survey implies that women are deterred from taking roles in male-dominated workplaces where they are the main harassment victims. Apart from that, the concept of power and specifically the misuse of power is central to understanding the causes of sexual harassment. In the workplace, power dynamics are commonly thought to be associated with an individual's seniority, age, or value to a business. For instance, a harasser might be in a position of power due to being the owner of a business, a value customer of a business, a direct supervisor of a person harassed, or in a position to influence that person's future career prospects. There is a way for companies can take to eliminate gender inequality in organizations. First, educate employees on unconscious gender bias. Everyone can have unconscious biases and prejudice about people or groups. Offer implicit bias training through the implicit association test to managers to make them aware of these hidden biases to minorities so that they can actively avoid discriminatory behavior and make more informed decisions to promote gender equality. Next, create fair compensation and promotion procedures. Create an employee compensation program that is fair, equitable, and transparent. Offer the employees equal pay for equal work, regardless of their gender. Offering competitive and fair pay is also a great way to attract and retain top talent. Additionally, businesses should focus on promoting qualified women from within. 
create a standard set of evaluation and promotion procedures that allow hardworking women to move up the corporate ladder. While this can reduce the current gender gap that exists, everybody benefits from transparency evaluation and promotion procedures, not just men, women and minorities. Other than that, offer flexible and supportive employee benefits. Employee burnout is one of the largest stressors currently impacting women in the workplace. Women are disproportionately affected by burnout, stress and exhaustion compared to their male counterparts. Companies can reduce stress by offering comprehensive benefits and more opportunities for better work-life balance, such as better access to check care and greater acceptance of flexible work arrangements. This can reduce burnout among women and allow qualified mothers to play a more active role in the corporate world. Therefore, there are numerous benefits for companies who are intentional about maintaining gender equality in the workplace, which is more innovation and creativity. People of different genders bring unique talents, strengths, and skills into the workplace, which can improve collaboration and result in a stimulating and creative environment. In fact, Companies often find that a gender diversity can lead to greater innovation within the workplace. Other than that, can build a great reputation. By being intentional about promoting gender equality in the workplace, it will foster a great company reputation with the outside world. People who have similar values will want to work for the company. And with happy employees, the company will have a positive and productive workforce. Last but not least, gender inequality is a real issue and hurts women across the globe. This means that the value afforded to women and men is not afforded in the same way for all women or all men and that our society, institutions, and organizations are shaped by those intersections. These intersections also influence the prevalence, dynamics, and impacts of violence against women. Therefore, this is why gender equality is important in the workplace. As well as promoting a fair working environment, it also ensures overall business productivity is as high as possible. That brings us to the end of this episode. I hope you enjoy listening to it and learn more about gender inequality in the workplace. If you are listening to this, it means that you have finished listening to the full episode with me, Hashima, your host today. We really appreciate your help and sincerely hope you enjoy listening to this episode. Thank you and have a good day to everyone.